video i tested the hardness of my three grands forest brook axes i tested my scandinavian forest axe i tested the 1800s broad axe and i tested the small splitter so i thought the next step would be to test the other major swedish manufacturer of axes that being holtzbrook uh, now i am using sobusen files these are very high quality they're used throughout the edge tool industry by knife makers, ax makers. Uh, this is the next best step if you don't have the thousands of dollars and, uh, and space and interest in maintaining um, a, a dedicated Rockwell hardness tester. So this is a basically a brand new set. I've only run these files on those Grands Forsbrook axes and maybe one or two others. So they've been used on you know, really three or four axes, brand new set. These are very reliable, very high quality. Now I'm testing Holtzbrook. They have a, a fairly special place in, in my heart. Uh, Holtzbrook was the first company that I went to when I wanted to buy an axe that was a little bit nicer than the Husky or Collins that you might pick up from your Home Depot or Ace Hardware or, or your local big box store. So um, I have everything from the large splitter to the uh, the Montreal, this is the two and a half pound version. They also make a three and a half pound version, I believe that, check out 940 Joey's video on it. He got a deal on it, heck of an ax. Um, this is very popular for that mid-range ax size. It's, it's a wonderful ax. I have the hatchet and of course the Arvika. So I feel like this is a very representative uh, sampling of the axes that Holtzbrook offers. I have you know some of the more premium these these are both from their premium line and then the mon this is from the agdor line uh the montreal here and then just the basic hatchet so this is really from top to bottom i feel like a very fair sampling of holtzbrook's axes so let's go ahead and give it a test um, now i'll start with this little hatchet here pound and a quarter i like this hatchet a lot um let's see and you always want to test top tap down with these files and if it digs in if it cuts then it is softer than the rockwell rating on the file and right away i could just tell that that cut and that actually cut pretty deep so uh so we know it's not more than 60 it's pretty rare to find an axe over 60 usually if you do find an axe like that it's going to be a vintage axe or uh, or a very uh kind of um, you know, small manufacturers use ball bearing steel and things like that. And you can really push the hardness up on those. So let's try 55. Wow. This is harder than 55. I am very impressed with that. I am very impressed. That is, it does not, you can see that does not cut at all. So we know that this hatchet is, uh, is greater than 55 but less than 60. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that over here. 55 and 60 HRC. All right. Okay, so next, might as well go from smallest to largest. We're gonna go ahead and start with the same process here on this Montreal. Uh, two and a half pounds is an awesome weight for this ax. Uh, it's, it's just a fantastic user. And, and yeah, oh, that just bit in right away. I could feel it, didn't feel like I needed to push it any further. That's the scratch right there. Didn't even take that much pressure. So we'll go ahead and put that 60 away. We will get the 55 and Oh, okay. All right. So, so the 55, it cuts here. And you recall on this hatchet, it's skated. But on this Montreal, it wants to cut just, just a little bit. And mostly up here by the toe at the heel, it skates but at the toe, it just barely touches the edge. And honestly, I wanna make sure I'm not cutting some residue. I wanna make sure I'm getting clean steel. Nope, okay, it didn't rub off. So, 
So this barely cuts, weird spot for it to cut, nothing at the heel, one spot here. I would say this is a little bit softer than, than the hatchet here, but still, uh, I'm gonna say this is between 54. I'm actually just gonna, I'm gonna mark the axes instead. That's 55 to 60. I'm gonna say this is 54 to 60. Now that, that is, uh, that's quite surprising. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, generally speaking, uh, it makes sense to me that the smaller your ax, the harder it could be. This, this ax is going to be potentially used for carving, um, and you'd want it a little bit harder for carving in basic carpentry. This is a, this is a, a work ax. This is capable of doing a lot. So you might want it a little bit softer if that's the way that you, uh, you know, people have a lot of different preferences. So if that's the way you think about it, I could see them making that manufacturing choice. Um, now this is, this is gonna be interesting. This is uh, Holtzbrook's flagship ax. This is the biggest, this is the baddest, this is the ax with the most history. This is the five-star Arvika. I did cold blue and brush the finish off because boy, do they ever spend a lot of time making this thing ugly at the factory. I can't stand the way that they finish these axes. It's just, it's just horrendous. Um, if, if you do wanna buy an Arvika and I, you know, it's not my cup of tea. I have given this thing a pretty wicked sharp edge. Um, it's got a very, very thin bevel. Um, you know, it, it cuts. Some people really like these. Um, if you're gonna buy one of these, I would suggest trying to get an ag door because those those leave the forged finish back, uh, back uh, further into the cheeks and the pole. Uh, they do paint it blue, but I tell you what, the way that they halfway grind these they grind them but they don't polish them and then they then they put a horrendous lacquer over it so you just defeated the entire purpose of grinding it, it it's just it, it looks like a hardware store axe uh when when they sell it to you and and you're paying the privilege of you know 250 bucks to own it so anyways i went off on a tangent there but let's go ahead and let's try with the hrc 60 okay and it and it cuts yeah, it, it doesn't cut deep, but it cuts. So we are, and again, it cuts here. Skates at the heel. Oh, well, you know what? I'm. This very well could be 55. In fact, I'm going to rate this 55 because it really doesn't cut. It it just it just barely touches the the uh, surface of the steel and then skates. So I think it's fair to call that a 55. We're going to go 55 to 60. 55 to 60 on that Arvika, and now <laughs> you know. This is uh, this disappointment here. <laughs> and if anybody from if anybody from Holtzbrook is watching, please stop making this axe in its current configuration as your only full size splitter. Please stop doing that. Um, the the vintage axes from Scandinavia that I have seen in this configuration are much heavier. This is three and a half pounds, and its center line is thinner than some hatchets. You know, you look for comparison, that's that's the hatchet. This is not a whole lot thicker than that. Um, so I, I wish if they're gonna make this configuration, give it a wider pole, add some weight to it, give it thicker, thicker cheeks here. It needs a it needs a heavier center line, uh, and, and widen that that bit a bit. Because th this is not a very functional splitter for me in the United States. Um yeah, so anyways, that that's what I'll say about it. This is a this is probably a 200 and some dollar axe um and and it kind of just sits on the shelf because it won't split the wood that I need it to split. Um so that's and that's actually a little bit dirtier than the other ones too. It's a splitter. And I do want to test the bit because um 
obviously back here towards the pole and further into the cheeks. It's probably only hardened to here. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, so this is the 60 Rockwell file. And yeah, that cut deep. So you would expect a splitting axe. Well, maybe not expect it, but a lot of splitting axes do come softer because, you know, um, you're not carving with it. You're not doing fine carpentry. You're smashing things. So let's uh, let's try up here. Wow, that is very, very interesting. We It cuts, but it barely cuts. You can see here just some very, very light surface, surface scratching. And that might even... That's pretty darn close to even polishing out. So I'm gonna call this 55. And I don't know if I'm gonna get a good mark on this. 55 to 60, because it is not harder than 60, uh, but it's not softer than 55. So, so the results of this test were fascinating to me. Uh, all of these axes were heat treated very uniformly. I don't have any outliers that are much harder than the rest or much softer than the rest. These are all within a very tight tolerance of 55 HRC to 60 HRC. Uh, and these axes were all manufactured um, in different years. So that speaks highly of Holtzbrook in their, in their tolerances at the factory in in the um, the effectiveness and uniformity of their heat treatment. Um, that's, that's wonderful to me. That, that is very, very wonderful. Uh, and in conclusion, Holtzbrook axes, at least the ones that I tested, these are significantly harder than my Grand Sforsbrook axes. Significantly harder. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's almost in, a, it, it's almost one full deviation. I mean, it is, it is like jumping from one file to the next, significantly harder. To me, it's not even, it's not even up for debate that my Holtzbrook axes are harder than my Grand Sforce Brook axes. And, you know, take that information as you will. Um, you know, I, I don't say that to disparage anybody. It's just to me a fact that, you know, uh, axe A is harder than axe B. You can attach whatever significance that you want to that. I'm not here to criticize, um, you know, somebody who prefers one axe over the other. Uh, it could be that the very specific axes that I have here from HB are just harder than the specific axes that I have from Grand Sforce Brook. Um, you know, I, I just don't know. I don't have enough axes to make that determination. Could be a difference too between vintage and new axes. I'm just here to say these four axes from HB were harder than the three axes I tested from Grand Sforce Brook. Um, now, these axes were all manufactured in different years. Despite that, and despite the fact that they're even different product lines, the, the uniformity of the heat treat is very tight, very tight tolerances. They are all between squarely 55 and 60. And, you know, I'd probably say that they are between maybe 55 and 57 um, because the 60 HRC file cut deep. I didn't have to push it hard. And the 55 HRC file barely cut at all. So I'm going to say 55 to 57 for all four axes, all four of them from different product lines manufactured in different years. That's impressive. Uh, an HRC range of two or maybe three, that's great. I'm very happy with that. Um, so um, I hope you found this helpful. And if you didn't find it helpful, I hope you found it interesting. Don't flame me out in the comments. I'm not here to criticize anybody. I'm not here to pump anybody else's tires up. Um, I like every ax company. You know, there are, there are things that are um, more in line with my preferences um, with, you know, one particular ax company over another, but I don't dislike any of them. Um, I like axes, generally speaking, and I'm trying to, with this video and what I'm hoping to turn into a series, just provide people with some basic information so you don't have to rely on these companies and their marketing department when you when you are looking to spend you know two or two hundred fifty dollars on an axe uh, i'd like some information that is just from a more neutral source and uh and from somebody that actually uses and enjoys axes so 
Um, so I invested in this Sobusin file set to, to just put some of that information out there. So, and you know what? I almost forgot to do this. I'm glad I didn't um, because I actually have here an Arvika Forge Axe with the, uh, the diamond stamp, Sweden, three and a half pounds. Uh, this, of course, is from the Arvika Forge that was purchased by HB in the middle part of the 1900s. So this is the Arvika before it was a brand from Holtzbrook. So I would like to see, it does have an M stamp. I would like to see how hard this is. It does have a little bit of a worn toe. Um, I decided I didn't want to reprofile it just because I didn't want to take that much steel off of uh, off of an axe from the Arvika Forge. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot. I don't know exactly when this axe was manufactured, but uh, but looking at it based on the pattern, um, probably from the 50s, maybe the 40s. This axe isn't terribly old in the grand scheme of things. So we'll go ahead and start out with a, uh, a 60 HRC. <laughs> wow. And th this, this is significantly harder than the newer HBs. If you remember, this 60 cut deep on the, um, cut deep on the newer Holtzbrooks. Um, but is is just barely cutting with this uh, this Arvika Forge. So we'll go ahead and try try this 55 now, and it just skates all the way from heel to toe, skates all the way across it. So um, this is my guess. My guess is this axe is probably 58 to 59 which is, you know, give or take a little bit, two to three Rockwell harder than those, those new Holtzbrooks. And, and that's consistent with my, with my testing. Um, new and vintage axes, typically the vintage axes are in the upper 50s. Typically a good new axe is going to be in the mid to maybe little better than mid 50s. So, so this is consistent with that, uh, very fascinating. Arvika Forge, just a just a little bit harder than the newer stuff.